overflows nature of male and female ejaculation truth as it is should be presented and one should not be afraid of whether people will like it or not they will criticize it or not that is not important A spiritual awareness of the beginning and of the end comes through sun energy know this as inner lamp this is the taste of truth that is eternal this is what i am communicating to you in myriad ways women have an organ analogous to male prostate that is able to produce a liquid that can be ejaculated upon orgasm not all women produce ejaculate the scientific study of female ejaculation and the female prostate has been greatly hindered by bad science cultural taboos and sexism female ejaculation or emission of a clear whitish liquid from the female genitals upon orgasm was first referenced in indian poems from the 7th and 11th century in rather stunning details herophilus an alexandrian physician born in 335 bc was an early performer of public dissection on human cadavers and is often called as the father of anatomy herophilus made the first scientific description of what would later be named as female prostate in 300 bc and aristotle hippocrates and kama sutra and galen all made further descriptions of female ejaculation prior to 1700 as a member of the well known scholastic community in early in newly founded city of alexandria during the single brief period in greek medical history when the ban on human dissection was lifted herophilus studied the ventricles or cavities of the brain the organ he regarded as the center of the nervous system also traced the sinuses of dura mater the <coughs> the tough membrane covering the brain to their junctions known as tercular herophili confluence of sinuses and classified the nerve trunk distinguishing them from tendons and blood vessels as motor or sensory in 1642 dutch researcher regner de graaf made a clinical dissection of female prostate using the modern scientific methods in the 1800s alexander skeen characterized the organ further and replaced its name with his own name calling it skeen's glands skeen's glands are two small ducts on either side of the urethra they help and lubricate vagina during sex and protect it from further infections the most common disorder of skeen's gland is skeenitis but from here on the story of female ejaculation gets messy social ideas of femininity masculinity gender and sexuality seems all to influence the scientific study of female ejaculation a lot of good studies on the topic got overlooked and some bad science got overused the tale of female ejaculation and female prostrate is important to tell 
not only because many women still struggle with orgasm, sexual fluid and their sex lives, but also because it serves as a shining example of how culture can influence science. So without further ado, let us get down to the nitty gritty, can women ejaculate? At the beginning of the 20th century, a renaissance of, human, of female ejaculation studies occurred. Early papers discussing the phenomena lacked a unified opinion on whether a liquid may exit a female's genital upon orgasm, and if it did, where it came from and what was it made of. It was Ernest Greffenberg who is famous for first describing the G-spot introduced the controversial idea in 1950s when he postulated that a stimulation of G-spot was responsible for the ejaculation of fluid through the scheme's glands. Despite his status as a respected researcher, his thorough description of the female ejaculation were seen as academy, academia and anecdot anecdotal at best and falsified at worst. If the work of experts was not being recognized, it seems unlikely that others would have luck publishing pro-female ejaculation research. And indeed, after Grafenberg came quite a bit of writings. These outrightly rejected the notion of female ejaculation. Notably, even Alfred Kinsey, famous for inventing the Kinsey's scale, in many ways the father of modern sexology, weighed in on the topic of female ejaculation, claiming that it truly was contraction of vagina, pushing out the fluid from the vaginal walls and therefore not an actual ejaculation. The few papers in support of female ejaculation that were published postulated that female ejaculation might originate from a small glands located just below the urethra. At the same time, another theory started making waves that female ejaculation was just urinary inconsistence. But for all the papers being published, no actual studies were being performed. It wasn't until 80s that the study of female ejacula ejaculation started occurring and turning up evidence for female ejaculation. A couple of literature, literature reviewers on this subject in mid-80s consider the study by Adigio and others in 1981 to be the first hard research done on this subject. It was a case of a study and provided objective evidence supporting the hypothesis that female ejaculation, a partial infertile homologous male ejaculation exits and that it was at least in part chemically distinct from urine. Thus it went on. As far as the female sexuality is concerned, male-female, these things are very important to understand. 
what is the role of these things in the development of human consciousness that is my main concern but something where the, it has been used as a taboo it is important to clarify those things and then what is the relationship between orgasm and meditation the difference is that sexual orgasm is very momentary although while it is there it looks almost eternal the feeling is just because of its depth but through meditation you can have it as long as you want so this is what is my line of start understanding which i am sharing it with you in myriad ways enough for now